All right, let's review sine and cosine um, in section 4.2. So we're mostly going to use the unit circle. So the unit circle has a radius of 1. So this line, the hypotenuse, will always be 1 um, for the terminal. And then the ter that's the terminal side. And then sine and cosine will basically just be the x and the y. So we just have to remember that cosine, um, I use t here, is the x. And sine of t is y on the unit circle. So I highly recommend printing out the unit circle and just having it for reference because it's really important to know. And in calculus, you'll really need it. Um, but let's look at that first quadrant and just make sure we remember all these angles. Um, so we're going to start with um, this point. So this would be 1, 0, right? The x value is 1, but the y value is 0. So that means cosine is 1, sine is 0. And this would be at 0 degrees or 0 radians. So degrees and radians are the same there. And then I'm going to jump up to pi over 6. That's kind of the next big one we look at. All right, you can draw a triangle if you want to check that out. And this one was, what was it? It was root 3 over 2 and 1 half, right? The x value was root 3 over 2. The y value was 1 half at pi over 6 or 30 degrees. And hopefully we, we remember some of these special triangles, right? All of those are coming from those special triangles. So let's check out the next common one. The next one was, that looks like 45 degrees, right? It's exactly halfway. So the x and the y value are the same. And so when they're the same, I think we got root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. Again, that's that special triangle with 45 degrees. And then that would be the same as pi over 4. Our preference is going to be radians. All right, and then the next triangle is actually the same triangle as pi over 6. It's just um, switched, the x and the y switch. So these two are the same, they just switch. We get 1 half and root 3 over 2 rotated. And that's because we have um, 60 degrees, which means we now have the 30 degrees here. So the sine and cosine just kind of swap sides. So this was pi over 3 or 60 degrees. Um, you will save yourself a lot of time in calculus if you memorize these. And then the last one in the first quadrant, the last common one, is 0, 1. Right? That's at pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So I highly recommend memorizing this. It's just going to make things be much more efficient in calculus rather than looking it up every single time. So let's... Um, find the following, and what we're going to do is we're going to find the reference angle in the first quadrant to, to find it. So let's see if we have x and y. So if x is the cosine value, so then cosine is positive on the right side because cosine is x, so that'll be important for reference angles. So then cosine will be negative on the left because, again, cosine is x values. And so then sine will be positive on the top, because sine is y values, and it'll be negative on the bottom. So it just means if we have this angle versus this angle, they might have the same value, but they might have opposite signs. And so we'll see that in the examples below. So let's sketch 11 pi over 3. So 11 pi over 3 is a little tricky. A full circle would be 6 pi over 3. So we're, we're going to go past one circle, and then we're going to go to 5 pi more. 5 pi over 3 more, sorry. So 5 pi over 3. We have a full circle, and then we go pi over 3. 2 pi over 3, sorry. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and so on. It ends up down here. So my reference angle um, is not pi over 3. The reference angle is the angle formed with the x-axis. Uh, 
and reference angles are supposed to be in the, we're trying to find it, the reference angle is one of these angles up here. So the reference angle would be pi over three. And then since it's in the fourth quadrant, um, sine is negative, right? Sine is positive, positive, negative, negative, because we're looking at sine. So it's the same value as sine pi over three, but negative. And then if we haven't memorized that yet, we want to, but we'll go over here. So we go to pi over three, the sine value is the y value. So it'll be root three over two. And that's it. Let's try another one. We'll do negative pi over four, which would be opposite direction, right? We go clockwise. So my reference angle is pi over four, because that's how far we are from the x-axis. And then cosine is positive, positive, negative, negative. So in this case, we're actually going to get the same value, because it's still positive. So cosine of negative pi over four equals cosine of pi over four. And we're going to work on memorizing these to save time. But we're going to go up to pi over four, and the x value is root two over two. For those of you who struggle with these, I think drawing this every time really, really helps. It just helps you visualize if it's positive or negative rather than trying to memorize when it's positive or negative. But yeah, let's try two more going the opposite direction. So we want to find when sine is negative one half. So again, I'm going to draw the graph. Sine is the y value, so we have positive, positive, negative, negative. So it's going to probably be in the bottom two quadrants. And then which angle was one half for sine? It looks like it was pi over six. So pi over six is my reference angle. So pi over six. All of these have a reference angle of pi over six because that's how far they are from the x-axis. So let's figure out what these angles are. The two I want are the two on the bottom, because those two are negative. And so what angles would those be? Um, this would be pi over six, two pi over six, three, four, five pi over six, seven. Oops, yeah. So this one would be seven pi over six, because this would be six pi over six for one pi. And then a full circle would be 12 pi over 6, so this ends up being 11 pi over 6. So we have 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And if you print out a copy of the unit circle, you'll see this um, if you don't remember this well. And then does anybody remember um, what else we can do? We can go around the circle and then land there. So it's plus 2 pi k, plus 2 pi k. The k is just an integer. It's just saying we can add as many circles as we need to. We can go around two, three, four times, but as long as we end up in one of these two spots, we'll get sine is equal to negative one half. All right, and the last one, um, cosine is root three over two. So cosine is x value, so positive, positive, negative, negative. And then root three over two, have we memorized this yet? Maybe. Oh, it looks like it's also pi over 6. So same idea, I'll draw the pi over 6s. These all would be reference angles of pi over 6. And then we want the ones that are positive. So I'm going to keep the one on the right side for cosine. So in this case, we get pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And then we just again add 2k pi. 2 pi k or 2 k pi, either. So if this isn't review at all, if this is brand new, please let me know. Um, it's okay if this is like we've seen this and it's been a really long time, right? But if this is brand new, um, please let me know. So I hope this brings back some memories of trig. I'll see you back for the next section.